Of all the draft picks the Philadelphia Eagles made in this year's class, there is one that stands out as by far the most interesting, and that is not Jalen Hurts in round two. I'm talking about linebacker Davion Taylor. It was arguably the team's most pressing need going into the NFL draft. Nigel Bradham is still a free agent, Camu Grugier Hill was allowed to enter that pool as well, and what was left was a very young, relatively unexperienced core. Cool. Nate Gary almost completing his transition from safety down to linebacker headed the way. TJ Edwards is still relatively unproven, but has significant upside, and the rest of the guys either have special teams potential, or a Jatavis Brown who has got concerns of his own when it comes to open field tackling. But we'll touch more on that in another video. So the Eagles had to hit a home run at linebacker. And there were so many theories about who they'd take and when they'd take. But ultimately, it was Davion Taylor out of Colorado in the third round. And he is absolutely fascinating to watch. So what does he bring to the Eagles defense? Why did the Eagles pick him? And what does the future hold for the linebacker position? My name is Liam Jenkins and welcome to another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. If you could leave a like if you enjoy it and hit that subscribe button to become a part of our community, that would be absolutely amazing. We're so close to 20,000 now, it would be absolutely unreal if we hit that milestone in such a stressful period. Make sure you're getting your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage from myself and all of our writers over at phillysportsnetwork.com. Now before we get to the tape, there is one thing we have to understand and that is that Davion Taylor can't really be evaluated in the same way as most linebacker prospects and that's purely because of his background. He's got a very raw footballing background and that shows on tape. As a member of the Seventh Day Adventist Church, Taylor was never able to play high school football games. He was only ever able to partake in practices, but Friday nights were out of the question. He then walked on at Coahoma Community College, where he then played the final few games, got a few offers from FBS programs, and would then play two seasons in Colorado, where he would total 24 games, 129 tackles, two sacks, and six passes defense, which is stunningly impressive for someone that has only really had three years experience playing the game of football. And that in itself is beyond important because as we just said, the Eagles needed an instant upgrade. They needed someone to come in and pack a punch at linebacker. And Davion Taylor, at least on the surface, doesn't appear to tick that box right away, but when we get into the intangibles, when we get into the tape, that's when you begin to see a very different side to the 21-year-old. For instance, the biggest thing here is that he ran a 4.49 40-yard dash. He's got a 35-inch vertical and run a 20-yard shuttle in 4.26 seconds. That may be the most important bit of information you need. The guy is just a freak athlete in every sense of the word. So now with that in mind, we know that he's raw, we know know that he's an athlete, let's get into the tape. While we're talking athletic traits then, let's first take a look at that need for speed, something the Eagles worked hard to fill. The closing speed here is just ridiculous. He's sat in zone coverage, it's not his assignment, but as soon as that ball comes out, he's turning, he's running, he's locked on, and like a homing missile, brings down the ball carrier. We talk a lot about east-west speed, what about north-south? Take a look at this blitz here as well as Taylor comes crashing on to a terrible snap to make sure that goes flying backwards. Now again, he is very raw, and there are plenty of examples of him being washed out of plays. This isn't one of them. He comes powering into that block with so much speed, it's enough to win the day. Locks on to Maurice Washington and just brings him down. If you watch this in slow motion, it's so impressive. Just watch the eyes. They're immediately locked onto his assignment. Uses that speed, drives into the chest of the receiver, pushes him off and then squares up to bring down the Nebraska running back. It's excellent stuff. We're going to see a sweep from Washington here and these are the plays where Taylor really stands out. Eyes up follows the flow of traffic. Look at where his eyes are pointing, but look at where his legs are pointing. He wants to get to that sideline first and he somehow brings him down for a loss. That is a ridiculous hustle play and that's the sort of thing the Eagles are going to try and nullify with the amount of high-paced offenses they now have to face moving forward. There's another example of that speed here. Look from how far away he gets back into this play. He is the only one that has any hope. You're 38-3 to down. You are 38-3 to down and you're going to run that hard to bring down a running back and stop another potential touchdown. That's the kind of hustle, that's the kind of toughness and grit that has been missing from this defense for so long. 
Predictably, Oregon scored a couple of plays later, but now you're down 45 to 3. You're still in trouble, and you're not going to see any less hustle from the linebacker. He gets washed out of the play here, in fairness. We will touch on that much later in this video. But he shakes off the block eventually, and again, look from how far behind you come. Do you know what? At that point, I don't care if he's washed out of the play, if he's going to hustle that hard to stop a touchdown when you're down 45 to 3. The rest of it can be coached, and the Eagles know that, but there is a fair amount of it, and we're going to start with block shedding here in that Nebraska game. He does have a tendency to just get washed out of plays sometimes. And given the fact he's one of the lighter linebackers around, it's not the end of the world. It's kind of expected, but it is a bit problematic. Like, that's a one-on-one -on -one matchup with a wide receiver. He gets thrown out of the play. He can somehow stonewall this. I think he luckily falls back into position to bring down the ball carrier, which is fine, but it doesn't happen all that often. I mean, this is from that very same game. These are three examples in a row, in fact, from that Nebraska game. And here, takes on the blocker. He's trying to run him to the sideline. Just can't quite get there. The receiver does a much better job of keeping him out of that play. Here's another example. He gets driven upfield. It just creates a hole for Washington to get through and down the sideline he goes. The only man capable of catching him there was number 20. And if you can block him and eliminate him from the game, then there's a good chance you're going to get that home run. However, if you don't eliminate him from the game, it's going to be a very, very different conversation. I Take a look at this. It's fourth and four early in the game. Oregon just going to dump it out and somehow Davion Taylor gets to it. That burst, that click and close is unreal. It's cornerback level and you don't get that speed very often from a linebacker, let alone someone with that kind of nose when he's locked in. It is like a big homing missile. You see another example here, straight down on a screen pass for another negated play. His click and close was on full show against his team's biggest rivals here. It wasn't ideal, but he loops around, makes sure he sifts through traffic well, makes the tackle. Now, this one's interesting because Colorado are going to have to rock and roll their safeties. That single eye is going to come down. All Davion Taylor has to do is cover the curl and flat. Now, he moves out relatively well, protects himself from that screen, but look at the closing ability there. Now, luckily, the pass is incomplete, but it is one hell of a dive down. You do not want to see that thundering train flying towards you. Here's another one from Nebraska. The speed in which he closes is actually terrifying. Now, this can lead to some missed tackles and that sort of thing, but again, and that's coachable. You've got a very raw, very fundamentally athletic skill set where you can close 10 yards in the blink of an eye and blow up a screen pass in the passing league that we have today where open space is everything. That skill set is irreplaceable. But there are weaknesses and we're going to touch on them now. In terms of getting a feel for zone coverage, his positioning is often pretty sloppy. His footwork isn't ideal. We see an example of that here. He's watching the quarterback, but his feet are very tight. He's quite rigid. It opens that window for the receiver to fluidly slip into. And I don't think this is anything, again, that isn't entirely coachable. There's a play here, for instance, against the Oregon Ducks. You've got a trip set for blockers. You're going to have a bubble screen underneath. And Taylor's going to come down, eyes locked on the ball, but the block's a little bit too heavy. He gets washed away from it. And I think it all comes down to positioning and just experience. You don't know where to position yourself unless you play through it. And again, very raw player. And offenses did play on that a bit. Now, you'll notice that Nebraska moved their slot receiver to the other side of the formation. They're going to run an option look and that number one is going to be a decoy. He's going to sweep back across the line to try and occupy Davion Taylor. The Taylor's now going to make three reads and that's hard to do for, for even the most experienced players, let alone someone with only two in his background. So he's going to have to read that wide receiver, then see where the ball's going, then react accordingly. So now he's frozen. He's in the gap. He's done his job. The quarterback pulls the ball away. Now he's got to come off the running back, peel to the quarterback and somehow stop number one catching the screen. The ball is overthrown, but it's just an overloading and forcing him to process information really quickly. He does get locked up. He does end up with ice on those ankles, and it's not a nice look. Now, not every player is like that. There are examples here where there's more motion at the line of scrimmage, forcing him to cover the slot wide receiver. He sells it quite well. It's not too bad. But the unsureness in coverage, the uncertainty, the constant footwork readjustment, where he's almost just jogging around the field a bit like a deer in headlights, it's visible. And I think if you scheme him away from that, if you keep him just matched up in man coverage on a running back, on a wide receiver, then you're going to be fine. It's when you've got him in zone, when you're going to maybe try and bring him down to crash off that edge and he's got to make several reads. 
It's problematic, but you get an idea of his man coverage here. He flips his hips so fluidly and just takes away that streaking wide receiver. Someone that has got a significant size advantage. You wouldn't expect many linebackers to be able to do that. Taylor can because of his skill set. In run defense, again, it can be a little bit inconsistent. He can overshoot gaps. But what we're trying to take away from this is that this raw skill set is so quick, so athletic, so volatile that you can mold this into a special player. And yes, it's going to take time. I don't think Davion Taylor will be a star in year one, but I do think with the way this Eagles defense is trending and the way you've now got clamps on the outside in the secondary, in the way that you're going to face many of those option offenses, teams like Baltimore, like San Francisco, like New Orleans, you need someone to get sideline to sideline rapidly, quickly to eliminate some of those more elusive gadget players and to force the offense into the middle where of course the Eagles have their major strength in their defensive line and their safety. I think he's going to be a big player in making that happen as someone that if you put him in the right situation can begin to really develop, use that skill set to better himself. And if you can add a bit of bulk to his frame, enable him to get off blocks a little bit easier and not be washed out by NFL talent, you've got the makings of, so of the perfect replacement for Camus Grugier Hill. But what do you think, guys? Hopefully this has opened your eyes up to a little bit of what we can expect from Davion Taylor. If you enjoyed this video, if you've got any opinions, Please leave a like. Let me know down in the comments. From myself, Liam Jenkins, I'll see you next time.